You feel like you've tried everything, but it seems like no matter what you do, you just can't get your rear end to be comfortable while you ride your bike. The saddle is the most important component to get right, and it can make or break how much you enjoy riding your bike. Here's how to choose a saddle that'll be best for you. What's up? I'm Zach Alardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous and subscribe for more fixed gear videos just like this one every thursday and saturday afternoon be sure to watch until the end of the video where i'll give a few of my saddle recommendations that a lot of people find comfortable at any budget the show notes and the product links are in the description and feel free to check those out at any point during this video to choose a saddle that'll be best for you there's three main things to keep in mind the first is the width and the shape of the saddle for the width 160 millimeters is a good width for a lot of people. A saddle needs to be wide enough to support your sit bones and be comfortable. 160 millimeters is a good starting point, but you can go wider or narrower depending on your riding style, riding position, and physique. If you have a more upright and relaxed riding style, it's a good idea to get a flatter and wider saddle, whereas if you have a more aggressive and forward-leaning riding position, it's a good idea to go for something narrower and rounder. Also, if your thighs are more toned and skinnier, a wide and flat saddle may be more comfortable, whereas if you have huge, bulky horse thighs, then a rounder saddle where your thighs won't rub up against the edge of the saddle might be more comfortable. But the question is, how narrow is too narrow and how wide is too wide? In general, it's a safe bet to err on the side of a wider saddle. You can get a narrower saddle, but if it is too narrow, then it can be painful, whereas wider saddles generally tend to be more comfortable. The best way to find out your ideal saddle width is to measure your sit bones, and you can do that by clicking this link here. The width and the shape in the saddle are the most important factors for comfort. Another important factor is how narrow the nose is. The nose should be narrow enough to not rub your thighs when you're pedaling. And the third important feature to look out for is to make sure that the saddle isn't too squishy. It is 100% a myth that a squishier, softer saddle is more comfortable. What makes a saddle comfortable is not how soft it is, but rather how well it supports your weight. For example, if you've ever sat on a couch where it's just way too soft and you completely sink in, it doesn't support you properly and it puts pressure in all the wrong places. The same thing goes for a saddle that's too soft. So make sure that the saddle that you're looking at isn't too squishy. Those are the three most important factors for a comfortable saddle. Having a width and a shape that's right for you, having a nose that's narrow enough where it won't rub your thighs when you're pedaling and making sure that it's not too squishy. But there's also some secondary factors that come into play when you're saddle shopping. You may be considering a cutout. Cutouts in the middle of the saddle relieve pressure on your gooch. Cutouts are especially good for longer rides and there usually really isn't any negative side effects to having them other than some people don't like the look of them. So if you're experiencing an unreasonable amount of gooch pain during your rides, it may be a good idea for you to get a cutout since it won't really hurt, but it could make your rides. Another secondary thing to consider are women's saddles. Women's saddles are generally standard saddles that are wider and have shorter noses. Don't let the name fool you though. Just because they're labeled women's doesn't mean that they're just for women. If you find that saddles are too narrow for your sit bone width, then you might want to look into getting a woman's saddle that will accommodate your needs. It could just be more comfortable. Secondary thing to consider are the rails, which affects the weight. There's three main different materials for saddle rails. The first is chromo steel, second is titanium, and third, of course, is carbon fiber. The different rail types don't change how comfortable the saddle is, they just change the weight and the price. So, if you don't care too much about weight, go for a chromo saddle. It will be just as comfortable as its more expensive counterparts. Now, here are my comfortable saddle recommendations that work for most people. Your mileage may vary, ranging from the least expensive to the most expensive.
First up on the list at $30 is the Charge Spoon. It's 140 millimeters wide, which is narrower and will be better for aggressive riding. With that said, it's still on the wider end of race saddles, making it more comfortable. It has a flat shape with rounded edges, which make it comfortable for most people, assuming you're not somebody with super muscular thighs or somebody with super scrawny thighs. And it has a narrow nose, so it won't rub your thighs while you're pedaling. And it also checks off the third important feature to look for on the list. It's not too squishy, and those three things about it make it a comfortable saddle for a lot of people. And it doesn't hurt that it looks good and comes in a few different colors too. I've never ridden one myself, but you can check out all of the glowing reviews about the Charge Spoon at the Amazon link in the description. Coming in at $60 to $80 is the Sella Italia Turbo. Like the Charge Spoon, it's also 140 millimeters, not too squishy, and has a narrow enough nose where it doesn't rub your thighs when you're pedaling. What makes it different than the Charge Spoon though is that it has a rounder profile making it better for people with really bulky thighs. I used to ride the 80s version of the Sella Italia Turbo and I quite liked it for short to medium distance rides. Anything over 60 miles I found that it became painful. Again, your mileage may vary. Now, I've got to mention my favorite title of all time on this list, and that is the Brooks C17 Cambium at around $100. The C17 Cambium measures in at 162 millimeters wide, which is part of the reason it has been the most comfortable saddle for me. What makes the Cambium unique, though, is that it's made out of vulcanized rubber instead of plastic that most saddles are made of, meaning that the rubber will bend and flex to gently hammock your buttocks and your gooch. It's just as comfortable and I would argue that it's even more comfortable than a leather brook saddle. It's also cheaper, less maintenance, doesn't take any time to break in. This is the best saddle that I've ever used and you can check out my two year review of this saddle at the end of this video. Saddles are the most personal components on the bike, but an overwhelming amount of people have said that the Cambium has been the most comfortable saddle that they have used. I've done century rides in jeans on this saddle, and by the end of them, my butt was the only body part that wasn't sore. Lastly, before you go out and try a bunch of different saddles, here are a few considerations. First, go in knowing that you're going to have to try out a bunch of different saddles before you find one that you really click with. Again, saddles are the most personal component on the bike. It's influenced a lot by your riding style, your ride position, your personal physique, and your tolerances for comfort, a whole bunch of other factors. What may be right for me might not be right for you, but do know that there is a saddle out there that will help you enjoy riding your bike more. Also keep in mind that your saddle that you have might not actually suck. Saddle position is super important, so play with the saddle angle before you commit to purchasing a new saddle. Because even the most comfortable saddles are uncomfortable if the angle is wrong for your body. The saddle that you have might be perfectly comfortable, but you just might need to find the right angle. What type of riding position and riding style do you have, and what saddle has been the most comfortable for you? Let's get a discussion going on in the comments so we can help those out looking for their dream saddle. 